by far the greatest failure of the pandemic policy across the world has been the segregation of the population into two, roughly two camps, the pro-lockdown group who felt the government needed to do everything it could to protect the safety of its citizens, and the anti-lockdown group who was hoping that the government would offer recommendations, but essentially establish hands-off policy in which individuals were left to make their own personal health choices in the interest of freedom. Sweden placed itself right in the middle of this debate by having a very flexible policy compared to pretty much every other country in, in the world for that matter. Sweden didn't just let the virus rip, however, they had policy in place such that younger kids could still go to school, but the older kids um, could not. And the, they never mandated masks, for example, but they allowed businesses to stay open. And so again, that placed them in the crosshairs of a lot of, uh, of individuals on the pro-lockdown side that, that almost salivated over any bit of bad news coming from Sweden, in which they could, again, virtue signal or shame them into coming over to the other side and, and in effect, proving to Sweden that they um, made a mistake. So the question is, is it fair to compare Sweden to Finland and Norway, which has been the benchmark for how Sweden has performed in this pandemic? And obviously, I would say the answer to that is no. And, and my reasoning is basically these two facts. Greater than 70% of the deaths occurred in nursing homes. And Stockholm's death rate was about two times greater than that of the rest of the country. So one thing I would say objectively is that Sweden did a poor job of protecting its nursing homes, but that does not mean it did a poor job of protecting the general population. The other thing I would point out here is that, again, with, with the majority of deaths coming from its overcrowded primary major city, Stockholm, that suggests to me that we can't just compare Norway and Finland to, to Sweden based on population density in the largest city. So if we take a look at that, Stockholm, Sweden has about 12,000 individuals per square mile, whereas Helsinki and Oslo have three to four times fewer individuals per square mile. So therefore, these are not good comparisons. Even geographically, Norway, for example, is, has a huge mountain range running right through the middle of it, which causes, which creates a lot of difficulty in moving from city to city as opposed to Sweden, which has a very flat plain that, that links up the entire length of the, of the country. And so therefore it's much easier to travel between these, between particular cities. But the better comparison based on population size of a large, the largest cities would might be something like Brussels, Belgium, for example, and London, England. And so when you look at these population densities compared to Stockholm, these are theoretically better comparisons. And, and, and again, when we look at the deaths per 100,000 using that metric, Sweden clearly outperforms both of those countries in terms of deaths per 100,000. I would point out too that because there are lots of honest articles about Sweden that can make fair and balanced arguments about how well they did, that to me alone suggests that Sweden's pandemic model was actually quite successful, aside from the obvious nursing home issue. But Anders Tenniel offered a, a, a more um, deeper perspective on this in that he suggested that with its larger migrant population and dense urban areas, Sweden is actually more like the Netherlands and UK than um, Finland and Norway. Tenniel is, for those that don't know, is basically the Swedish version of Dr. Fauci, but with a much different perspective on the pandemic than Fauci. <clears throat> when we look at Sweden versus Netherlands and the UK in terms of 
deaths per million, for example, Sweden falls somewhere in the middle. Again, nothing out, nothing outstanding, nothing terrible. These are countries that uh, had pretty strict lockdowns, and Sweden, with its more flexible policy, still managed to end up somewhere in the middle. When we look at the excess mortalities on, on, in, in a graph over time, we see on the y-axis the excess mortalities as a percentage. And <clears throat> here we see at the end, you know, Sweden basically just ends up co um, in, a, in a cohort, in a, in a um, cluster with the UK and Netherlands. But over time, even, you know, you can follow Sweden, for example, as the purple line. When things were really bad, Sweden still was had, had fewer excess deaths at the worst parts of the pandemic. The purple line here just kind of migrates in and out of the Netherlands and UK lines, suggesting again that there wasn't anything unusual about what happened to Sweden despite their pretty lax policy. <clears throat> Still, that caused individuals to um, attack Sweden throughout the pandemic. And here's a classic article title. COVID-19 case surge forces Sweden to rethink its strategy, praised by U.S. conservatives in, in, in order to throw that political dig in there. But really, what did they rethink? They basically just took a bunch of policies that were very flexible and made them slightly less flexible. So the number of people that could gather, not you cannot gather like most of the rest of the world. It was the number of people that could gather. We'll, we'll, we'll limit that a little bit. They didn't tell people don't go to concerts or theater performances or lectures. They made a recommendation to make people to, to have people avoid those, but they didn't make it a mandate. They limited the number of people that you could have dinner with. They didn't tell you don't go to dinner. And they did other common sense things like banning the service of alcohol after 10 p.m. These are not draconian measures. These are reasonable measures. <clears throat> when we take a look at excess deaths for Netherlands, Netherlands, Sweden, and UK, for example, it's not really until we hit the 65 to 74 year old range, at least for Sweden anyway, that we can even tell that they had a pandemic. This, this red dashed line is the substantial increase line. And then this, this gray zone here is normal. And so Sweden largely falls within normal throughout most of the pandemic, even in terms of 65 to 74 year olds. It's just this one time here, or this is the first time here where Sweden exceeds the substantial line and and it starts here in the older age range and as you can see england and even netherlands far exceeds that substantial line at the same time frame but as i said when you look at other age ranges for sweden this is this happens to be the 15 to 44 you can't even tell that they had a pandemic this this again, gray bar here, is the normal range. So I would leave you with this. Sweden's residents are among the happiest in the world. This is a recent poll. They, in fact, they rank something in the order of six, sixth or something in that ballpark out of 149 um, countries. Would a, would a country that has been absolutely smashed by COVID, according to most media sources, have residents who overwhelmingly vote for their country as a happy place to live, that alone rests my case on Sweden. <clears throat>